start right away with the uh, panel, I'd like to introduce Stephen Hetherington, who actually initiated that all years ago. Stephen Heather Hetherington, together with Martin Pike, founded the OMI Trust this year as a charity organization with the goal to make instruments available for one-handed musicians. Stephen graduated from London Royal Academy of Music and began a professional career uh, playing trumpet in classical uh, music uh, orchestras. Already in his 20s, he formed a theater produ uh, producing company, Hetherington Sailing. After this company has expanded to theater management, he sold the company to Kudos Entertainment in 2007 and acts now as the chairman. As chief executive, Stephen led the 98 million pound development of Britain's National uh, Millennium Project for the Arts, the Lorry. He wrote and directed Birmingham's Bid for European uh, Capital of Culture and founded the Digital Exploration Center in South NBC in 2010. I'm looking very forward to his introduction to the principles of one hand musical instruments and the Omi Trust. Please welcome Mr. Stephen Perry. Thank you, Hans. I would stand on the platform, but there's nobody there, and it looks terribly lonely, so I think I'll stay down here, but feel slightly safer. Um, I'm going to go back to the beginning, if I may. I, the introduction was very complete, um, and of course stole my words. Um, but nevertheless, I think there's value in some repetition and some expansion um, and some emphasis in this, in this whole issue. The, the, the issue came to me because I have a daughter who's hemiplegic. And uh, at school, she was unable to participate in music making. She desperately wanted to. All that she was offered was what you might classify as therapeutic instruments, things you could hit with one hand, notes you could play with one hand. But um, the serious kids got on with playing in the school orchestra, um, playing together, whether bands and pop bands and, and so on. Uh, and it was an extreme disappointment to her. Now, as a professional musician, I immediately thought, well, you know, there's going to be something out there. And I, my head ran through several centuries of music, not just the, the current classical orchestra, but you know, shawms and pommers and sack butts and things from centuries ago. Uh, and everything required two hands. The next challenge from my neighbors, you say, well, this is the case. And they say, yeah, but there's concertos for one-handed instruments. There's all kinds of fine music written for one hand. There are indeed, but they're written for one hand. They're not written for one hand with the capacity to play with two hands. That is to say, there is something that they're not doing because of the limitation, the physical limitation of the player. But this goes on further. When one gets into this proposition, of course, very quickly realize that as the nature of disability, it's singular that uh, any form of disability, any form of impairment in one hand or arm, let alone two hands or arms, let alone two hands, two legs and feet, but just that one hand or arm will stop you from achieving any high level of performance in playing music. Now, this is important because although it sounds, uh, there is a sort of accusation you could make about it terribly elitist, we only want to go for the best. But if you go for the best, if you absolutely aim for that pinnacle, it must be capable, one must be capable of being able to play to the highest possible level. Then everything else beneath that is included to uh, just having a bit of fun with the kids playing chopsticks. So it, it, in, in aiming that high, it's in, the intention is to be completely inclusive. Now, let me take another point here. The one-handed musical instrument is, a, is, for me, a fantastic focus because it expresses a problem. And it, hopefully, through the competition and, uh, and through the processes that we will go through, will lead to a lot of technological, mechanical, electronic, um, sociological, and other forms of development, which have very, very wide importance, certainly to the world of people with motor impairment, but also to anybody else who wants to play an instrument. You know, the, the Anders Martinu that, uh, that was invented, mm, can't give you a date, um, um, uh, uh, in the early 20th century, is an instrument that, uh, that it began to be played in other places. Um, as soon as you have an instrument of quality, an instrument of fascination, an instrument that expresses what the musician wants to say, then 
musicians, everybody will pick it up and want to make something of it. So whilst this is the tight focus of our competition, the, the, the implications of it are very, very much broader. I shall quickly refer to my copious notes at this point. Here they are. Um, okay, uh, the, the, the problem is, is one that should not be underrated. Um, those of you who are musicians immediately won't. Uh, but in talking about it to colleagues, technologists and scientists, um, uh, and uh, so I'm being slightly derogatory to technologists and scientists, but in a place like ours, Electronic, where I couldn't take the risk. Um, but there is a great misunderstanding about the complexity of a musical note and what it contains. Uh, again, one of those knee-jerk responses to my, um, to my claim here about one hand is to say, well, there are fantastic um, keyboard instruments that produce, or programmable instruments that produce some extraordinary things and capable of emulating complex uh, musical sounds. Uh, but this isn't actually the problem. I would say, uh, my technological friends may want to dispute this later, we'll see, um, but I would say that the production of the music, the production of the sound, I'm sorry, is a pretty advanced. There's some very sophisticated stuff out there. What I'm concerned with is that there's virtually nothing which can deal with um, a plurality of input systems that have some form of equality. To put it bluntly, you know, how do you replace the flexibility of the hand or arm when you're playing a violin? How do you get you know, the, the, that sort of short list of, of possibilities in the production of the note, in the commencement of the note, you know, the sort of staccato, the legato, the, all, all the accents and all the, the preparation of the notes and, its decay, how do you get that vibrato, that, the changing timbre, the texture of that sound, uh, the, the tuning of that sound, and particularly, how do you manage to relate to others in its constant morphing and adjustment in musical expression? This is uh, an input problem, I think that's putting it uh, technologically, an input problem that we're not, as far as I can see, close to solving, yet, the technological advances around us seem to point to a capability which is just not exercised in this direction. Well, I may be wrong, it may be that when you look at this problem in detail, you can't get close to it. I doubt that very much. I think there's an awful lot of, um, um, of brilliant people out there who will come up with some exciting solutions. Now let me just, ripping off a page of my notes, excuse me a moment, let me just um, then refer to some of the, the um, the, the sort of context of these, of these um, uh, problems and how we might approach them. There have been um, uh, quite a number of attempts over a period of time to create new musical instruments and to create one-handed musical instruments. And if you type in one-handed music instruments uh, in, into your search engine, you will find quite a lot of things come back. Now, they're not all one-handed in truth. A lot of them claim to be an art. But nearly every one of them, not every one, but nearly every one of them will be a mechanical device. And this is the first, I would say, first most basic point of approach to, to the problem. Um, it solves a lot of immediate difficulties in that if you're simply saying we will devise some mechanical extension of what the instrument already does so that you can use the same input mechanisms then you have already cleared away a lot of the principal difficulties. So, you, for example, you take um, what is usually you'll find there is saxophone, clarinet, and flute. They come up nearly all the time. So you can, uh, you can extend keys, adjust keys, you can move around things to try and make it possible to make everything accessible within one hand. And you've still got the same input mechanisms. Uh, in fact, I've got a picture on my computer here of a saxophone. Just I won't go through a lot of instruments here, but um, but I think I can probably find a picture of the saxophone in here. Yeah, there it is, the sax. Um, well, that that is a one-handed saxophone. It looks like a perfectly ordinary uh, saxophone. Um, what it's got in it, though, is some really rather interesting devices. Uh, that, that simply extend from where your hand is to where the hole is that you're trying to open or close. Uh, when you look at that uh, in a slightly different angle, you can see that it is actually rather a complicated proposition. Now the consequence of this is that the instrument does not respond like um, the, uh, the two-handed version. 
Uh, it's when you think of all the friction, all the delay, uh, all the, the mechanical possibilities for breakdown that exist in that, uh, you can quickly become aware that it's very unlikely to be a fine instrument. Nevertheless, there is legitimacy, a great legitimacy in that approach. Um, it's such an amusing picture, I'll leave it there for a minute. Um, the, the, other, the other end of this is the purely electronic, where you're going to say we will invent new input possibilities. Um, as you've seen, I, many of you will have seen wheelchairs driven by breath control, for example. That's, and breath, of course, is incredibly sensitive, so you do have a possibility there. Um, but you can use other limbs, other things that move. Um, the, the, the eye writer, which won, a, which won a Pixar a few years ago, two years ago, something like that, is a very, very interesting and subtle uh, piece of technology, which cost the American defense industry to copy the same sort, develop the same kind of thing, several billion dollars, I think, and cost the eye writer team about 25. Uh, it's an extremely interesting bit of technology. Um, so there are going to be other input devices, but how you interpret the, the subtlety of of musical performance through those input devices is a big challenge. Anyway, the, com the concentration has tended to be around uh, the a few wind instruments. And incidentally, anybody who's thinking of trumpets, which comes up a lot in the challenges to me, the trumpet requires the left hand to take a weight, well, uh, uh, which, you, which you really need to do. But it's also got two tuning slides, which non-trumpeters may not be quite aware of. The first valve and the third valve slide need constant adjustment in tuning. Um, but even if you drop those and think you can adjust the tuning with the embouchure, you still need to take the weight in order to do all the clever stuff with the right hand. So it's, it's generally a two-handed instrument. So the hybrid is the third, of course, where you're looking for, I can see doubt, brilliant, okay. We'll have a raise a problem later. Um, the, the hybrid is another, is another sort of possibility where you're going to combine different technologies, different possibilities into the same instrument. And I saw a trumpet um, designed uh, a couple of months ago, which used uh, just two fingers and a series of pressure pads, and it responded to those. Um, but for various reasons, it didn't work very well. Um, but uh, I won't go into why. Anyway, so, so here, is a, here is a proposition. Now, I come to the end game here. The, the, my, my aim is this principle that you, that you kindly quoted, undifferentiated participation. In a radio interview I, I did a couple of days ago, they asked me, is the, is the great aim to have this great orchestra um, of playing great classical music um, of one-handed musical instruments? And it's absolutely not. Uh, my aim is not necessarily classical music or any other form of music. My aim is to have a musician able to play with other musicians, regardless of whether he's got one hand, two hands, or ten hands. That's where the, the, the target is. Uh, lies. So um, I'm, I'm concentrated here on just a very few outlined things. We'll come back perhaps uh, at an appropriate moment to how the competition will operate. Some of that will be, actually a lot of that will be influenced by what you have to say here and what others have to say later on um, as we go through this process. But we're at the beginning of something. We expect this to run for many years. Um, and we don't expect somebody to come back in a year, two years time with a great instrument. And the instruments that do come back, if they are, have the capacity we're looking for, are likely to require a long time to learn and play. Now you can't, if somebody, one of you comes up with a great two-handed instrument called a violin, you know, it will take somebody a long time to become proficient enough to play at a very high standard. And so it will be, I think, with the instruments that we produce. So it's, we're not looking for simplicity here in performance possibilities. In fact, we're looking for the, the, the prospect, the possibility on the probability of virtuosity. In fact, I'm sorry, I'm pitching Joe's, apparently Joe's uh, comment from yesterday there. Um, but that's, that's, what it, that's what it has to be. So uh, hopefully through the rest of the, um, the session today, we get a much more technical uh, view of both the issues, the possible solutions, the challenges here. Um, and, uh, and I hope too that you'll carry your interest uh, beyond today out of this room. Thank you very much. Are there any questions on this point from the audience? Um, since we do have a little bit more time, I would like to ask Stephen uh, to introduce the only trust, maybe in short words as well. Um, the, only, the only trust, um, we formed a, Martin here and, uh, and I um, formed the trust um, in order to be able to raise uh, money, really, for the 
project and be able to put together an administration that could pursue this over time, and that is the point. Um, and, and also to give support to those who are engaged in, in the challenge. So in, that support might mean introduction to uh, musicians, to technologists, to building teams, uh, spreading knowledge, spreading the opportunities that are, that are cropping up, the ideas, uh, uh, and interactive forums, and you know, all those sorts of things to, to, to gain support and momentum for, for the project and to internationalize it, which may I say it's already happening. We have already supporters uh, you know, operating in, in the USA um, and fundraising there going on at the moment. So the, the trust is, is now, as of last Thursday, granted charitable status, uh, kindly by the Charity Commission of the United Kingdom, um, which is an important point for us because it enables us to draw funds down from charity funding bodies, which we couldn't otherwise do. Um, the, the objects of the trust are absolutely focused at the moment on, um, on the development of musical instruments and, and disability. Um, but they're also phrased in a way that, in the first count, gives a, a, a vehicle for the achievement of that through the one-handed musical instrument competition, um, and, uh, and in the possibilities of that might, uh, we might want to develop in the production of musical instruments for disabilities, but production of musical instruments more generally. But I'm very concerned that if we make this thing, we also want to make lots of them, and we want to teach people how to play them, and we want to help them into schools, and and into other situations. And I should also mention, if I just go back to my, my um, opening uh, slide for a moment, uh, which was, I think, two back. Uh, no, three back, there we are. At the bottom there, there, is the, um, there are um, four, I would say, principal collaborators. We actually have quite a lot of collaborators um, already, but these are quite Im embedded in what we do. Um, uh, Drake music you'll hear about from, uh, from Nick later, so I, I, won't, uh, I won't address that. HemiHelp is a national um, charity in the United Kingdom uh, for uh, helping uh, uh, particularly children and families with hemiplegia, and music making is one of their big concerns. Um, but I perhaps um, particularly interesting is the City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra, which as you know is one of the world's great symphony orchestras, um, who pitched in uh, very strongly um, to offer their musicians, their contacts, um, and indeed they're introducing quite a lot of famous names into us at the moment who are keen to help, but also in introducing other orchestras, international maestros, um, and, uh, and some of the financiers that they work with and the sponsors they work with. So very, very important sponsor for us. The Digital Exploration Centre is, is a relatively new organisation in South End in the UK, and it has some similarities uh, on a far less far less uh, grand scale than Ars Electronica, but it has some similarities bringing together academia, um, the uh, artistic venture, and commerce and commercial interest in uh, creativity and uh, operational use of digital technologies. So anyway, that's, that's, that's our, our group. At the moment, we are only two trustees, myself and Martin, um, uh, but we will no doubt grow during the coming year, and we hope that with this charity will go on for a very, very long time. Is that helpful? Any more questions? Any? Hello. Uh, I'm just curious. Uh, I guess you mentioned sort of the singular singularity. Of, you mentioned the the singularity of of uh, disability. Maybe that's not the right word. The specificity, or something of disability. And I was curious what your feeling was about a an instrument that would be designed for a single individual, um, and how that might sort of generalize or be a uh, be considered in, in something like this, um, mm -hmm. or yeah. Um, well, I, this is a subject I think Nick's going to talk about as well. Uh, the, the, the design, I have to give you my view before Nick gives you a far more educated view on it. The, the um, designing instruments for, for an individual has the danger that that's as far as it goes. Um, so you've got a double set of problems. The first problem is the problems I've addressed uh, broadly uh, in summary about making any instrument that can truly emulate a classical instrument. Um, but the second problem is that if you design it specifically for one uh, physiology, um, then you're probably going to exclude a lot of others in the process. So there are dangers in that. But the concentration on music and disability tends to be that way at the moment. Is that, is that fair, Nick, to say? whether 
it be calibrating or set up or whether it actually be tweaking it sort of in more hardware hacking sort of way. Yeah, okay. So that's suggesting that, that finding the, 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 the um, universal instrument um, uh, is, is a sort of the way it is approached and then adapting it. But the universal instrument, you're thinking of a singular that is a performance instrument that is just performing on which you can create music. But that's a very different thing from, from emulating a trombone or a violin, which is going to be really, really difficult uh, to do, uh, which is where we're moving towards, to, to actually be able to participate alongside classical musicians playing classical uh, instruments. I call them classical, that's not to exclude the contemporary, it's just that, the, that everybody plays classical instruments with very few exceptions until you get right into the end of electronic production and pre-programming and so on. And, a lot of the guitar on the on the rock stage is a classical instrument in that sense. Any other queries before I pass the mic over to my colleagues? Then let's press on. Mm -hmm.